So we're doing the neck up, 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 up. Then stopping there with one hand, take your opposite hand, uh, your one hand to the opposite side of the neck. So you're kind of going around the neck. And then doing the base of the neck and the back of the neck. Now you just go straight across and switch the hand. So now the left hand is at the base or the right hand and you do opposite side of neck, then base of neck, then back of neck. And then we do thumbs right in the base of the skull and go in and out right along that ridge line, right? So we wanna have the skull feel very separate from the neck. And so we wanna define that line for our brain what is the skull and what is the neck? Then we go fingers like tiger claws through the scalp, through the hair to the back. So like a, like a rake that you're going through the weeds there. And then we do a similar sort of sweeping gesture with the palms, sweeping the front of the face and the, the forehead and back along the side. And to add to it, this little space here, which is like a tension-based area through the body, we go spread from there. So your index fingers get up in there and go up and spread. And spread. Now, similar idea from the bridge of the nose, cheekbones up over the ears. So sweep and spread. So dispersing. One more. All right, now we've got the ears. Couple techniques. First one, cup, and then press and squish the ear and then come underneath and squish. So flowing like that with circles. both ears and then we've got scissor index finger behind the ear middle finger in front up and down right on the root so a bit vigorous then scissor cut the dish of the ear while you circle so it's cutting and circling Then tiger claws, jaw, all the way down. Again, jaw, all the way down. One more, jaw. Now, lung point one and two, this little nook here in the chest shoulder, make your knuckles like this, circle, heart, rake, right along the outer rib cage, that's the heart point, and then under, up the middle, and sweep, and then squeeze down the arm. So we do other side, make the little knuckle position, lung point one and two, heart point one, under, up the middle, shoulder, and then squeeze down the arm, squeeze, 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 and one hand on the chest, other hand up and down the chest. Then the front ribs, upper stomach area, liver and spleen. Then the groin area, inner thighs, fronts of thighs, outer thighs, backs of thighs, then we get to the knee joint, back of knees, sides of knees, fronts of knees, inner knees, fold at the hips, lower legs, calf area, the shin area, ankles, and then sweep the hands around the feet to the inner ankle, come all the way up, past the groin area to your belly button, go around the belt meridian to the back of the spine. So just go around with your thumbs, get there, 
and then go up and down on the lumbar spine with the knuckles, uh, but not on the spine, on the muscles, and then go palms down the outer leg, around to the inner, come up the inner to the navel, and we do that flow again. Belt meridian back to the Ming Men, the door of life in the lumbar, up and down to loosen up stagnation, and then sweep around the feet, come up. Do that twice more on your own. Try to get that flow. And then we finish with similar flow to the arms. Up the outer, turn, down the inner. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Switch arms. Up, down. Good. And shogun, float, turn. Up and over, settle, 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 settle. And then moment closing. All right, scoot to the back of your chair. Let's just warm up our leg movements here. So chamber, down, chamber, down. Sorry for the squeaky chair. Chamber, down, chamber, down. Keep doing that, a couple more. Now, chamber push, chamber down, chamber push, chamber down. Now, chamber push and hold the leg out there, point. Then invert, evert. <clears throat> then circles. Other direction, circles. And switch. Point flex. Invert, evert. Circles, other way, circle, and done. Scoot forward again to the front edge of your chair all the way. Last thing we'll do before we stand up is those swivel steps. Lift the ball of your left foot, turn on the heel so the leg turns externally. Then lift and bring it back to neutral then lift and turn it slightly in. So you have this sort of awkward position and then neutral. External, neutral, internal, neutral, external. Now let's skip neutral. Open, close, open, close. One more. And back to neutral. Other leg, external, neutral, internal, neutral. Notice the hips and other legs stay pretty quiet. All right, now let's skip neutral. In, out, All right? They stay quiet, they just sort of stay where they are. And this is free, the leg bone free to turn in, free to turn out. And back to middle, let's do them together and let's just skip neutral. External, internal, external, internal. So we're discerning the pelvis and then the legs that are plugged in. We need to feel that movable free joint to be able to effectively walk and change direction and all that. Now, neutral legs, 
hip distance or so. Slide your feet back a little bit. Whenever you're getting ready to stand up, right? You might be sitting at a table, eating, talking. It's time to stand up. First thing is feet back a bit. Hinge at hips. Head goes forward of the knees. And then push through the earth to rise up to standing. Let's sit back down. The butt goes back behind the heels, then you bend the knees, sit. Do that a few times. And notice that you can be very loose, relaxed, very light up top, and it actually helps you quite a bit to not be tensing up your upper body. A couple more on your own. Now, next time you're up, do your squats. Sink and then rise and go too far a bit, too far forward with the hips. So you, so you blaze that trail and then it'll help you find middle. And then sink and then middle and then too far forward with your upper body softly falling back just a bit. And then middle. So really fine middle. One more. Sink. And forward. And back to the middle. Now, adjust the camera a little bit. Sorry for the experimental bit here. Okay. So now get to where you're using your chair for support and we're gonna rock into the balls of the feet lift rock uh, lower down rock back to the heels hands on the chair for balance lift the toes and balls of the feet off the ground lower them rock forward lift lower Rock back, lift, low, rock forward, lift, back, for a couple more. Good. Now turn. Have that hand there for balance and just work weight shift to the right leg, empty the left foot, go left heel off the ground, little lift, put it down, land it, shift your weight, wait until that other leg is empty, heel, toe, lift, land it empty, shift. But right away, we're getting this feeling of separating empty and full, changing the weight. When this leg is empty, it's ready to actually lift, actually lower, shift. For those of you that have been practicing for a bit, you might start playing with hands free, right? Just leaving them comfortable. Remember, the lighter you are up top, the initial tendency is to hold on like we're going to keep ourselves upright by holding our shoulders and arms, but actually let them go. Let everything hang so that you can actually get through to the earth and then that leg is empty. Shift, get through to the earth, then that leg is empty and it's not needed for you to stay upright. All righty, now, uh, next thing we do here, so I'm just changing where my chair is so you guys can see me. Now, uh, uh, what is that? Right hand on the chair or whatever. Outside leg swing. Loose. Loose swinging leg. And then we change legs by doing a hook step, step across, rotate, and face the other way. Other hand. Swing the leg from the hip. Just easy, nothing too major. 
Just getting a feeling of looseness. Change sides, hook step, turn, face the other way. Now watch, swing the leg back, bend the knee, bring the knee forward, extend the foot, swing it back, tuck it and bring it forward, swing it back, swing it back, swing, swing. Reverse that, forward, tuck, Reach the foot back, having it here, and then letting it swing from there. Reach back, swing, swing, swing. Loose, right? Like a pendulum releasing. That's the thing you're practicing. The skill is letting go. Letting go. Switch sides. So that outside leg swings back. Tucks, the knee comes forward, the foot goes out, swing, 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 swing. Switch directions, forward, tuck, reach back, swing, swing. And parallel, facing your chair, empty your right leg, out, in, out, in, out, in. And switch, out, out, in. Now, this right leg again, empty, bring the foot forward, and then trace the outside of a circle, come up the middle. Outside of a circle, up the middle. So the leg's behind you, it swings forward. Sweet. Other direction, come back, go around. Back, go around. So the leg being empty, it's just sort of gliding above the ground. And switch, change sides. Foot forward, outside of a circle, all the way behind you, sweep it forward. Sweep, sweep, sweep. Other direction, back around to the front. Back around to the front. Keep going. And middle. Now I'm going to face you for this next one. Empty this left leg. Turn it out. Bring it to neutral. Turn it in. So notice this leg never has weight in it. My weight's always here. So you have your chair. You're making sure this leg is empty and just going out. Neutral, in, neutral. Sort of like you're tapping the floor, but you're not falling weight into that leg. Internal, neutral. Skip neutral now. Just go internal, external. Internal, external. One more. All right, and neutral. Now, change the weight. This leg is your empty leg. External, neutral, internal. There's more range turning out than there is turning in. Right? There's just a little range, but it's an important range. Skip neutral. And back to neutral. Shogun, arms up over. This is that just moment of not doing. So that's what makes it 
Qigong practice. The hands come all the way down to the navel there. The elbows relax, the shoulders relax, the hands just softly hovering at the navel, at the belly button. And release the arms down. Now, just to loosen up the back, let's do one more of these here where we sneak the butt out and we just sink a little bit. This Tai Chi squat. Open the back and then come back to standing. Twice more. Sink. And rise. Sink just enough to open the back. And rise. All right. All right, so back to the walking practice here. So you have your chair, uh, the hands on the chair. Now, put the inside leg forward, heel touching the ground, empty. Soft weight shift into that front leg, emptying your back foot. And then back. So there's this falling forward and down and through. And then a little bit of back movement, but really it's falling or softening down through. And then softening forward, softening back, forward. Now let's go to level two on this exercise. Lift, lower, shift. Pause here, lift, lower, shift back. Lift the front foot, lower the front foot, shift into the front foot. Lift the back foot, lower the back foot, shift into the back. Lift, lower, shift. Lift, lower, shift. That's level two. One more of those. Now, Hand on chair, probably. Lift and tuck the knee up. This is chamber. Set the foot down, no weight. Shift into it. Now, back leg, heel comes up and you lift the knee forward, right? So the leg comes in front. And then reach the foot back. Shift back into that leg. All right, so let's do that again. Chamber. Down, shift. Once that back foot's empty, it's ready to come forward and go back. It stays empty the whole way. And then we shift. Chamber, down, shift. Chamber, back, shift. Last one. And bring feet together. Change sides. So based on where your chair is, either you move the chair or you move your body. Inside foot. And then we rock forward to level one. This is a great one to practice because you're keeping the feet connected to the ground, so there's a psychological comfort to that. But you can completely practice getting empty and getting empty, right? You can feel that, okay, I'm not using the leg, but it's still touching the ground. And we need to differentiate. So if this was all you could do, or if you've been using a chair and you wanna add challenge, start doing just this one with no chair, right? With no hands, and then go back to the chair for Level two now, where it's lift, lower, shift. And then again, lift, back foot, lower back foot, shift back. Lift front foot, lower front foot, shift. Lift, lower, shift. One more, level two. Someday you'll be doing level one and two with no hands. But then level three, perhaps you place the hand on there so that you can challenge yourself to really chamber that leg now, all the way up to knee tuck and sit down with no weight. Then shift 
and still using the chair as needed to allow you to really reach the knee up, but also more importantly, to extend the leg back without putting any weight in and holding that for a moment, feeling that challenge, and then shifting back. Lift and tuck. Lower with no weight. Shift. Wait for it. Then you're ready to chamber. Reach back without any weight in it. Shift back. Two more. Level three. Step the feet together, show gong or closing gong. Moment of not doing. Hands hover right at the belly button height. Elbows are soft, shoulders relaxed. And release the hands down. Change back to the first side. So either change the chair or change your body. Now, the key to this one is along the length. You need the length, so you got to have your chair turned sideways, so you're not relating to your chair this way, but you're relating to it sideways, so you can back up and have this whole railing of the back of your chair to work with, right? So if you want to face forward like this, turn your chair that way, sideways, right? Turn it like this. So now, back away from the camera, so the chair is in front of you and you can just barely reach it with your fingertips out in front of you, right? So that's how you want to be set up. I'm going to go sideways so that they're at an angle so you can see all the different things. But I'm backed away from the chair. My right foot goes in front, heel softly touching, right? Now, level one, I shift into my front foot, back foot is empty. I let it swing forward. Shift into it and Pause. Now we go back. Shift into your back leg. Wait for the front foot to be empty. Swing it. And shift. Chair right there. Shift. Swing. Shift. Pause. Shift back. Swing it back. Shift back. Pause. Arms relaxed. Shoulders relaxed. Teacup on the head. Forward and back a couple of times. Sorry, getting a phone call here. So there's a certain rooted quality of feeling securely connected to the ground that can only be achieved. Let's go to level two now. Lift, lower. Now you might need to use a chair. We step over a small obstacle. Like there's something on the ground and you got to pick the foot up over and step it and then shift. And then we lift the back foot, lower the back foot, shift back. Now there's something right behind your heel and you have to pick your foot up, tuck it and reach it back. And then we shift back, lift and lower. Forward, small obstacle. Forward and lift. Lower, back, small obstacle, back, lift and lower. So what I was saying is there's a certain feeling of connectedness to the ground that can only be achieved by letting go, by sort of unsheathing these layers of tension. So any amount of sort of holding on, all that's doing is keeping us from that feeling and it's that feeling that, that gives us then this bounce of rebound through the body. Where, so we're not afraid of the ground. We're actually really letting ourselves go all the way to it. And then all the way to the ground. All the way to the ground. Let's go level three. Again, you might have your hand on the chair now for this one. This one is just exaggerated. Heel, knee, foot, down, shift. Heel, knee, so it's chamber, and then back, shift back. We exaggerate 
that chamber. And switch sides. So either switch the chair or switch your body. Inside foot, heel softly touching, level one. Just rock into your front foot, swing the other foot, rock into it, pause. Rock, uh, shift back, swing it back, shift back, pause. So that soft letting go as your means of rooting. So even if your hand's on the chair, just make sure everything else is easy and relaxed. Level two, lift, lower, shift, up over a small obstacle, shift, lift back foot, lower back foot, shift back, small obstacle, lift, lower, shift. Small obstacle, shift, lift and lower, shift back. Small obstacle, shift back, lift and lower. A couple more. And actually, let's go right into level three on this next one. So that's hand on chair as needed, chamber, down, shift. Exaggerated step, like you're blazing a trail and trying to create a lot of room for your brain and nervous system. So you're really exploring what are the edges of the range. So I'm going up, in, out, down, shift. I'm going here, 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 down, shift, all the way to here. Blazing trails, neuromuscular pioneering, right? Clearing the frontier. One more. And Chauvin. Now get somewhere in your room. So if you're facing the camera, back away from the camera. This is where it would be nice if you had a walking stick or a cane, something that can go with you because now we're gonna do three, five, seven steps in a row. So level one, left foot in front, shift, wait for the back foot to be empty, swing. Shift, wait for the back foot to the empty swing. Shift, shift, shift. Go all the way to that side of the runway, and then let's go back. Shift back, be careful. Wait for the front foot to empty, swing it back. Shift, wait for the front foot to be empty, swing it back. Shift, swing. Shift, swing. Shift. Do it again. So it's this shift, swing, and empty foot. Shift, swing. And if you master this thing I was talking about, the relaxing as your means for rooting, then what ends up happening is you're always rooted. You're never not rooted, and you're just changing legs. And it's almost like both legs are empty all the time. So it's like because you don't come up and down and up and down, and you're not holding yourself up trying to come across the earth, it's that you're always down, you're always released. And you're just changing which leg is your conduit or plug to that state of rootedness. Let's go to level two now, which is lift, lower. Now it's small obstacle, small obstacle, small obstacle. Up and over, up and over, up and over. Backward. 
backwards, be careful, of course. Up and over. Shift. Up, tuck, reach, shift. Up in front, tuck, reach back, shift. Up, tuck, reach. Up, tuck, reach. One more, and we'll just do level two. Some of you might choose to do level three, but we're just going to do level two. <clears throat> And the other way. Up, tuck, reach. Shift. Up, tuck, reach. Then shift. Great job, everyone. Really good. The quality of movement I can see. Now, Shogun. Okay, now sideways walking. So set up so that your chair is facing this way. Get to the right side of that chair. Fingertips can be touching or no hands, All right? It's up to you. I'm gonna turn and face this way while I do it. Imagine there's a chair in front of me. I wanna be able to see what you guys are up to. So now your inside leg, the one closer to the chair, empty, step it out. Ideally, you step it, no weight, right? So do that just a couple of times. Notice there's the option to go like this and put your weight in the leg or to keep your weight over here and step. Then shift. Now that your weight's over here, when you bring this right foot in, keep it empty. Then put the weight in. Step out, no weight. Shift. This one's empty now, it comes in empty, stays empty, then you melt through it, step out. Melt through that left leg now, stepping in. Out. So again, the word that always comes to mind for me is discernment. Discerning, what we're discerning is what's a step, what's a shift, What's a step? What's a shift? Because usually they've clumped together into some sort of unclear, clumsy movement. Let's go the other way now. Out. Change. In. Change. Change. And notice now the hammock of support in the pelvic floor, the sort of groin and uh, perineum and backside area, this sort of chassis of support that is sort of rocking almost like, like a weight trade traded over here. Then there's this underneath. We bring it in. Then this underneath. Underneath. Let's go the other way and back one more time. Out. Shift. In. Shift. Out. Stay relaxed. We don't have to come up and over to get to the side. We can actually, as if it's happening underground. 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 <clears throat> Change direction. Underground. So up here is soft and loose. Eventually this is where different, you know, Tai Chi movements can happen with our walking. It's called the hands play with clouds, but again, that's something we do in the Friday class. And good. Parallel feet, shogun. Remember, all the way to the navel there, Bruce, all the way down. Elbows soft. Yeah, you don't want to get caught somewhere like this. Get everything completely released, very good. And then arms hang. All right, now work on our <clears throat> rotational steps. So this is again where you'll need your walking stick or your cane. I'm gonna face away to start. Now, empty the right leg. Remember this exercise that we did where we were turning it? So that's what we're working on and then we add to it. So watch me do a couple in a row and then you'll join me. Leg turns out, but there's no weight in it. I then shift my weight, my pelvis turns to match that foot, 
and then I bring the left foot to match the right foot. And then I put the weight in the left foot, right foot's empty again, and I turn the same foot out again. So the same foot, turn, shift, turn, and arrive. So there's sort of three stages here. It's one, two, all of that is sort of one movement, bringing the left foot. And then the third stage is emptying the right foot, turning the right foot out. That's one, two, three. Go around one more time to your right. So keeping the right foot empty when you turn it out and step it. Then shift and turn and align yourself. Keep the right foot empty as you turn it. Shift and turn and once you're back facing forward, we do that to the left. Empty your left foot, turn it out. Just stand there for a moment each time. So especially when you're first learning it, take a second right here, and then be very conscious going shift and turn and orient. Then empty the left foot, turn the left foot out without turning the body at all. So just the foot turns out and then everything together. Shift and turn and square. Empty the left foot again, turn it out and stand there for a moment. And then shift and turn and square. Empty the left foot and turn it out. And then shift and turn and square. Go around again to the left. Notice that same hammock or chassis in the floor of the pelvis this is involved here, and it's just a more complex experience than when we were just sidewalking or even forward and back. Now there's a rotational element that has to bring, uh, has to uh, keep in check. The next time you're facing forward, stay facing forward, check me out, and you'll see what I do now. So the next one, instead of this right leg turning out, the right leg and foot turn in. Then I shift onto it and reorient myself slightly offset to the left. Doing that again, I empty the right leg, pigeon toe, shift and reorient. Empty the right leg, pigeon toe it, and then shift. Now the important thing, is that you're not taking a big step anywhere in space. This right leg isn't going over here or going back here. It's literally just turning in place, like very close to you. So keep it very close in your comfort zone, but just change the angles and then shift, change. Change the angle, shift and change. We're gonna go around a second time. Right foot, internal rotation, shift and change. Internal rotation, shift and change. Internal, shift, change. The next time you're back facing forward, switch left foot pigeon toe, shift and change. Left. Empty that foot, set it up. Don't put weight in it yet, and then go into it. Pigeon toe, shift. Pigeon toe, go around a second time. Now we put all that together. Please watch me one time around. Right foot turns out. Shift, turn, and left foot's got to stay empty so it can 
pigeon toe. My left foot turns in, and then I shift and turn, and now I'm facing away from the camera in just two foot movements. Now, one, shift, pigeon toe it, and in just two foot motions, I'm back to facing the direction I started. Let's do that together. Right foot turns out. Wait for it. Shift onto it. Establish yourself there. Turning the body. Keep turning a little bit and pigeon toe the left foot. So your pigeon toe and then shift and turn and face away from the camera. Then turn. Shift. Rotate. Pigeon toe. And turn. Go around twice more. I'm going to watch you guys do it a couple of times. So you turn your right foot out. Shift onto a turn and make sure you pigeon toe that left foot so that you're ready to just rotate the body and be facing away from the camera. Turn the right foot out again. And continue around. So Gary, it looks like you went halfway and then came back around the other halfway. Couldn't tell, but make sure, notice that I go all the way around. So I'm going one, two, three, four, and I'm back to where I started, right? So in four or five, six foot movements, after you've done three going to one direction, uh, then let's do three going the other way, where it's in left foot if you're doing it with me, and then right foot pigeon toe, left foot external rotation, shift and turn body and turn leg and toes, Right foot pigeon toe. Now picture that espresso cup sitting on top of your head. Body relaxed down through the earth. The chassis of support just holding you as you relax and let it do its job. Rather than all this tension up here, relax and let this chassis in the groin pelvic floor Hold you. And back to facing forward. We're going to add the next challenge here. So watch me do it. Takes a little more room in the space. Right foot turns out. I shift onto it and take one step in that direction and pause there. Keep watching, please. Then I turn the right foot out again. Shift, turn, and take one step in the direction that I turn my toes out. So now I'm sort of creating like a big square. Turn the right foot out, shift, turn, and then take a step and shift into it. And then turn right foot out again, shift, take one full step. And you should be generally back to where you started in four of those experiences. So again, right foot turns out, shift, turn, take a step, pause, turn, shift, turn, take a step, shift, pause, turn the foot out. Shift, turn the body, take a step, shift, and one more. Back to generally where you started. Let's do three more of those to the right. So this is where it really shows, are you doing empties and folds? Are you, or are you not? Because you have to empty this leg to let it be free enough to step. You have to empty this right foot to turn it out, but you really got to empty this left foot as you bring it across. Let's do just one more in this direction, then we'll go the other way. Turn, step, turn, step. Turn the foot out.
Now take three side steps across. It's our starting place. Let's go the other way. Left foot turn out. Shift, turn, take a step, shift into that stepping foot. Pause. Then left foot turns out again. Shift, turn, step, shift. Pause. So again, left foot turns out. Shift, turn, step. Shift, pause. Turns out. Shift and turn the body. Step. Shift in that direction. Turn it out. Shift and turn the body, reorienting, and take a step in the direction you just reoriented. Turn that foot out. Shift, turn, reorient, take a step. Shift in that direction that you just oriented. Now that's going to be the next direction, so turning out. Shift and turn. Step in the direction you're oriented. Same foot is turning out each time, should be. Let's do one more. Shoulders relaxed, body upright. Any amount of not good alignment in the body, any amount of your butt sticking back like that, it's just more work that you're making your body have to do. And shogun, arms float up and over and settle, 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 settle. Hands right in front of the belly. Let's do our closing sequence here. Hands on the chair or hands stacked on the belly. Weight in your right leg, put the left foot behind, touch the toe, press the heel, release it, step parallel. Step behind, touch the toe, press the heel, release, together, shift. So I'm facing you so you can, so I can see it. Touch. Now, one thing important here, don't go back into that leg. Stay in your front leg. Just press the heel. You should feel a calf stretch. Release. Together. Stay in your front leg. Touch. Press. Release. Back. Stay in your front leg. Press, release, back. Those of you able to do with hands on belly and staying in your front leg, add looking over the shoulder to create this little bit of a twist. And then back. So you look, whatever leg you're in, this front leg, that's the side, that's the direction you look. And it creates this ringing out of the whole body. But if that feels weird on your neck, as it can, just don't do it. Just keep doing this opening version. Last one. And middle. Now, it's from even, outside leg, externally rotates, lift it, circle it in, dangle it down. Rotate it open, lift, Roll it in, lay, uh, dangle it down. Keeping it dangled, roll it open, lift it, roll it in, down. Roll it open, lift, roll, dangle. Open, lift, roll it in, dangle. One more. and change legs. From standing even, outside leg, external, 
up in the angle. Over, up, roll it up over the top and in, let it hang. Turn it over. Up, in, angle. Out. Up, in, angle. Turn it out. Up over the top and dangle in one smooth circle. Turn it over. Up over the top, in, then dangle. Over. One more. All right, switching back to the other leg. Watch what I do here. Swivel, right, so the heel is out, the leg is in. Bring the knee across without kneeing your chair over it. And open, down, swivel on the ball, the foot so the leg turns in, knee goes across, up over the top and out, down to dangle. Turn it on the ball of the foot, internally, cross, up over the top and out, dangle. Swivel. Now can you make it a smooth gesture? Not fast. Smooth. Up, over, top, out, and down. Swivel. Across, up, over, top, and down with the leg turned out. Swivel. No body weight in that leg. When this leg comes down, I don't go into it, right? Gary, check, check that, that's happening for you. You're, you're falling into that leg. Use the chair, use this leg, so that when you come down, it comes down empty. Empty, there you go. And switch. <laughs> Turn it internally, so that's the ball of the foot. Internal rotation from the hip. Bring the knee across. So across, when I say across, I mean like you're kneeing your chair that's over here. And then you go up, over, and out. Leg comes down, no body weight. Swivel on the ball of the foot so the leg turns internally. The knee goes across your line, so not straight up, but across. Up over the top, dangle. Swivel. Cross, up, over, out, dang. Swivel. Swivel. <clears throat> Swivel. Swivel. And shogun. Now, hands right along the groin, the inguinal region, pubic region, then go around the side of the hips to the sacrum, the tailbone, the hip muscles, the lumbar spine. Now, remember our squats that we did at the beginning. So as your hands go down the back side of the leg, stick your booty back and sink the tush. The hands then travel around the, to the inner ankle. As the hands come up the inseam, stand back up, hands to the belly button, sweep around to the ming men, rub up and down on the back, then turn your palms onto the body, butt starts going back and sinking as your hands travel down the outer legs around to the inner, standing up, the hands come up past the groin to the belly button, come around to the back, ming men, Butt goes back a little, hands sweep, sink the tush, hands come around, come all the way up, and navel. Then come up the outer arm to the shoulder, turn that palm up, sweep down past the fingertips. Up the outer arm, down past the fingertips. Three more. One, two, three. Switch arms, come up the outer, turn, down the inner. 
Up the outer, turn, down again. Up, down, up, down, and down. Shogun, final time, closing the practice. Uh, remember what I say, Bruce, remember that, yeah, elbows down, hands relaxed, rather than stuck up here, right? And then seal the practice. This is called the Lao Gun point. Goes over the navel. Other Lao Gun point goes over the navel extended. Five breaths here as you just let the practice totally close. The narrative, the story, the poetic story is when we're doing movement and self massage and all of that, we're calling our life force out from its nest to come and do things, right? To activate the body. We even generate life force with movement as well. And then by coming to stillness, it's like where we fill up our battery when we get a great night's rest. When we wake up like, I feel fantastic. They say, that's this battery deep in the gut, deep in the belly. So it's at least an interesting story. But Western medicine is finding the importance of the belly as well. So uh, the gut, right? gut health. So we're just kind of honoring that here as we finish. And then the Taoist bow to close the practice. Grab one thumb, making an entire fist. Fold the fingers over the back of the, uh, the back of these four knuckles. Just fold the palm over. Creates a little yin yang symbol. And bow. Thank you so much for your work. A little past 11 here, so I totally get it. If you guys just have to wave and say goodbye, if there are any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, or comments or anything. Feel free to chat. So I have limitations on what I can do because of my hip dislocations. Mm. So I can't turn the foot in. At all? No. Not even a, a 16th of a degree? I guess I could do a bit. There we go. I'm just, I'm just in fear of it happening again. Yeah, 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 definitely. So be careful, of course. But if, if there's just a little bit of that... Um, and sometimes it's that movement that the hips need more than anything. It's the external rotation that people that we do a lot of, and we don't do enough of that internal rotation oftentimes. But that's something we'd have to talk about specifically if we wanted to look at what your hips are capable of safely. Because um, I can't do that in this sort of context with the group. Right. I can't really look at your body, but I'd be happy to uh, if you ever wanted to. Um, to figure out what your safe boundaries are. Okay. Anything else? No, that's it. Okay. I'm getting excited about the idea of com combining the legs and the arms. Yeah. When does that happen? Well. We gotta prove ourselves first. Well, that's in a way that's a separate class. It would have to be a separate time because this is just trying to get people basic walking, you know, but, um, so for some people, this is plenty, but in a different setting, actually learning, shifting, turning, coming back, doing arms up top, uh, could be very, very fun. So, um, that's something to, uh, maybe figure out, maybe do a small group on, uh, of people, you know, who would be interested in doing something like that. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Have a good week. Yeah. Thanks, Otto. Thanks, Gary. Any questions? Gary, be careful of your butt sticking out. Okay. Notice that you walk around a little bit like that. I know. Yeah, I know. Like this. Get it under there. Because again, if you have back pain or you're tired all the time, a lot of times it's from something like that. It's like, you're just in a state of like your body's holding on for dear life versus you just get to that place where it goes through you. You don't let it get vectored and held in all these little nooks. 
All right. Yeah, I, I just I know that I bend over, but I have trouble. Sometimes I just can't straighten up. Well, it's got to come from the hips, not from the shoulders. Right. Bring your butt underneath. So this exercise, this one of the squat, mm -hmm. middle, too far. But for you, that too far, that's where you're probably not going. You're, you're staying somewhere around here. And maybe you're too far forward is actually middle. Mm -hmm. So you got to do that so that you blaze open this pathway this way so that you can come back from there to middle rather than most of the time being here. Sort of it's a, it's a fear thing. It's like people do that because they, they think it's like preparing to fall or something like you're ready for it versus getting all the way vertical. So, and then everything relaxes. That's the, that's the, that's the deal. Bye, Janona. Bye, Michelle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Deal.